everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. We're outside today because temperatures have finally hit heckin' hot here in the Piedmont Triad of North Carolina, which right now means specifically 90 degrees Fahrenheit with 40% humidity, so it feels more like it's 92. Don't worry though, it's going to get down to 78 at 10 o'clock tonight. So this is perfect weather for solar dyeing. I want to try something a little bit different though. Usually when I solar dye, um, like most people, I just put the yarn in a glass jar and put in the water, put in the vinegar, put in the food coloring or whatever dye I'm using, Kool-Aid or whatever, and put the lid on top of the jar and just sit it outside for hours and let the sun do its work with uh, heating up the water and getting everything going. But this time I want to do something different. So I've got my yarn all wrapped around my square frame. I built this out of PVC pipe and I cut the pieces to be 18 inches long, each one of them. So that theoretically, theoretically, each wrap of yarn should be one yard. And I wrapped, I soaked the yarn overnight in vinegar and water. Actually the leftover dye bath from the last time I dyed yarn in the crock pot. Um, I tested it first with the pH meter and it was showing a pH of 3.5, which is really, really acidic. So I figured it was still acidic enough to use to soak the yarn in for dyeing. Um, for those who are curious, I tested again after I was done soaking the yarn and it had gotten all the way up to a whopping 3.8 for the pH. So I still got plenty of use out of that as far as acidity goes. I took the leftover food coloring from our Peekaboo Rainbows and Blue Skies episode and poured it into these silicon molds and put them in the deep freeze. That's a freezer chest or a chest freezer for those of you who are not familiar with the term deep freeze. And to give you an idea of exactly how hot it is out here, I had these in the freezer for about a week at least. Um, and they were frozen solid. And they've been out here on this table here in the sun for all of maybe five minutes and you can see they're already turning to liquid. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to place them here. Um, no particular pattern. They're only going to get placed on the top layer of the yarn and then as they melt, uh, as they melt, they will drip down through the yarn, hopefully to dye the bottom layer. And these are just a variety of different colors and they come in different sizes. And the part that's melted still that's liquid in the bottom, I'll go ahead and just pour that over when we're done. This one looks like it's gonna fall all the way through. And of course it never fails as soon as you start doing any kind of filming there's all kinds of stuff going on um, that's okay i actually live in a very quiet area um, i've got trees woods right behind me we have all kinds of animals like deer and possum and foxes and raccoons and even a skunk that come to visit us um, they like our frog pond that we added in last year. Oh my, these little bitty footprints are so melted, they don't even look like footprints anymore. Um, that's okay. They'll still die just fine. And it's actually kind of fitting that I am dyeing these with footprints today, because today is July 14th. Um, and this will probably air much later than that. But it is July 14th today, which means that today is the 22nd anniversary of Chad and I starting to volunteer with the Animal Rescue and Foster Program in Greensboro, North Carolina. So yeah, 22 years ago today, we walked into um, a recreation center called Lindley Recreation Center. This was before ARFP had any sort of a permanent facility. and we picked up our first two foster kittens and we've been doing this ever since. I, I never expected this would become such a huge part of my 
my life. I, when I walked in there, I wasn't expecting that 22 years later I would still be doing this. I, it's not that I didn't want to, I just hadn't thought about it. Um, but it is the most, most fulfilling thing I've ever done in my entire life. Okay, so I still have a ton of food coloring left. So I am going to pour some in here. Pour some in here. Dribble some all along in here. This is going to end up being very free form because, yep, it is heckin' hot out here today. I kind of like how that looks, though. It's very cool. I'm not getting a whole lot under here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and pour some more under here. Just sort of jiggling this to splatter it out. And jiggle some more color here on the top. I want to make sure I get some here on the edges too. Because otherwise they'll just get nothing. Because I'm not going to be turning this over and dyeing the other side. I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. Okay, then. I'm kind of peeking at it underneath. There's actually a lot of light under there. But yeah, I can see already that the ice cubes are dripping down onto the other one. Um, I'm going to have to try this sometime starting it way early in the morning before it gets this insanely hot um, and just see what happens. Let it have time to truly melt just down in there and see what we get. So now that I've got that all on there, I'm going to go ahead and just lay my shower curtain over the top. I'm not going to worry too much about sealing this too tightly. I want to keep the bugs out. Um, not that we have a ton of mosquitoes, but this also thanks to our frog ponds because not only does it attract frogs and we get tadpoles, but it also attracts dragonflies and those guys all eat mosquitoes. But we are in the middle of June bug season, sorry, June beetle season and Japanese beetle season, so I just don't want them getting in there. Japanese beetles might not, but uh, June beetles are not the smartest things. They tend to fly into the house, like literally fly into the side of it. You just hear it bang. Um, so I don't want them getting into it. And also the main reason, of course, is because then they'll keep the steam in, which will help to set our yarn. I'm just sticking it under my frame here. You know, it already kind of reminds me, reminds me of a peacock feather. It's kind of pretty. All right, I'm just going to let this sit out here and do its work, melt everything, heat up, um, until everything's all melted and I think it's good. So it's six o'clock. Are y'all ready to go check out our yarn and see how it looks? Come on. Okay, so first I have to admit, I did come out about five o'clock just to look at it and see how it was doing because I'm not a patient person and I wanted to know and I wanted to show Chad too. Um, so we did peek and it was, it was looking good. It was a little bit warm still. Um, even though the temperature had cooled off so much by 5 o'clock, it was actually nice to be out here. It wasn't melting. 
Uh, but we went ahead and covered it back up again uh, just to let it cool off and get that last little bit of heat in there. You can see looking at the, the shower curtain, we got a lot of steam in there. And that's good because that will set the, the dye to the yarn. Also, I can't believe that I completely forgot to say this before, but the, the yarn that we're dyeing today is Dyer Supplier Fingering Weight 100% Superwash Merino. I don't know how I forgot to do that. The dye is um, Wilton's Icing Gel Food Coloring that, as I mentioned before, was left over from a previous project. So frozen. All right, let's open this up and take a look and see how it looks. Oh, check that out. I really do think it looks like peacocks, like peacock feathers. Oh yeah, and, and it's cool. It's cool now. And you can see I'm not coming back with any color on my hands. And it's kind of neat that even though we just got these big splotches of color, in some places, especially with the violet where it broke and some of the blue, you can still see the imprint of the little paw, the little paw print there. It doesn't show up as much on the orange one, but like this one right here, it's almost perfect. And over here, you can see it a little bit over here. So that is really neat. Obviously, you won't have to see that. You won't be able to see that when it's worked up. But you know, I can see it here, and it looks neat. Not the other side. Let's see how the other side looks. Not as much color. We've got a big white splotch here, but you can see that we did get some decent color. I don't know that we had a lot that dripped through really good. Um, I imagine a lot of this big color that we're seeing here is where I tipped that in. Um, but, yeah, because like this here actually matches up on the other side with the orange, so that's not from it dripping through. Um, Yes, it's dripping lots of water. It's very, very wet. So I will definitely have to try this again sometime. Um, where I only put it on the top just to see if it drips through and we get a decent amount of color. But I am going to take this inside now after it finishes dripping. And I am just going to set this on my desk in my office let it dry some overnight okay so the yarn dried completely overnight much to my surprise i figured it would still be a little bit damp um because normally it takes a few days for a skein to dry um completely after i've dyed it but i guess because i've got it on this frame so that it's just one strand uh there's not doubled strands on top of each other or lots of lots of strands on top of each other i guess it got a lot more airflow and of course between the top and the bottom so it was able to dry out completely and i wanted to show you what it looked like when it's dry because you know colors look darker when they're wet once i go to rinse this i've got to take this off the frame and you're not going to be able to see it all stretched out like this anymore so yeah i love how this turned out i mean it's kind of tempting just to leave it on the frame and hang it up on the wall. Um, it looks like a painting to me. So I love it. And I love how, yeah, here with the way the the colors broke, and we've got the little the lighter colors, the blue on the inside, we've got more of the reddish purple on the outside. I love that you can actually see the little paw prints. I mean, yeah, it's not obvious, and I don't know how well you can see it on the camera, but I can see it, and I think it looks fantastic. I love how... All of the colors melded together. Um, we didn't end up with any ugly brown, which I was a little worried about when I started just pouring everything over. But no, everything blended together into some nice yellows and greens and blues and purples. This is neat here, how this did, the way it spread out from the paw prints. That's not for me pouring any of the dye there. That's from the ice melting and the colors just spreading out like that. So 
I think that's really cool. And then here on the edges, this just fascinates me. Um, well, let me show you the other side first because you can see it a little bit better on the other side. At least I can. Um, but this is the other side. Check that out. I don't think any of this color that we've got here is from the frozen dye cubes melting and dripping down to the other side. I think this is all where I just dumped that melted dye liquid in here, not being able to see what I was doing, and it just spread out like this. And I love this. I am definitely going to have to do this again sometime because I just, I love the way this turned out. We got a big, couple of big sections of white. I would have preferred to have the color completely all over it, but still like right here where it's blending together, it's, oh, I love that. But what I was gonna show you is look right here and here on these edges where the yarn wraps around the frame. It looks like it's been kind of rubbed and worn. Um, it's sort of like when you're painting watercolors and you overwork an area and it kind of tears up the paper. So you've got your you've got your colors and then you've got your worn paper there. The yarn is not worn there. That's just how the colors spread out on it. This is just pure white here. And I don't think I can get it to show up good on the camera really well. I can try bringing it up so you can see the let's see. I don't know if you can see it really well, but yeah, the yarn is not damaged or anything. It's not worn or rubbed um, or anything to take the color off. It's not felted. It's just, that's just pure, pure white there. And then we got the color on one side and the color on the other side. And I think that's really cool. I'm not entirely sure why it did it that way because yeah, we've got color here on the edge here. We've got color here. It's just right here at the very apex on both of these where just no color. I don't think it's because that's where the frame would have been pressed down against the the table it was on because these joins here actually lifted up a little bit from that. I don't know. I am not sure. I'm going to have to play around with it and experiment and see if I can figure it out because it's a really cool look, I think. So anyway, enough rambling about that. All in all, I just absolutely love this. I think it turned out fantastic. Um, not really at all like I thought it was going to, but I'm happy with it. So now I need to take this whole frame apart, put in some ties, and go wash and rinse out this yarn. So I'm going to start first by putting in a couple of figure eight ties, just because I do not want this to get completely tangled when I wash it. I'm just gonna tie this really loosely right now, because this will go back down to more of a skein. And flip it over. See if I've got another piece. These are all just little pieces of um, leftover yarn from projects or dyeing or whatever. I keep them in a bag. I throw nothing away. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Okay, that one's really short. Do it, I can do it. I think I can, I think I can. Can I, can I? Good enough. Okay, and now the last thing I need to do before I take it out of the frame is I need to tie the two ends of the yarn back together. Um, these are the two that would be tied together when you get a skein so that you don't have just loose ends. And I, of course, had to untie them to wrap this. 
like I did. I'm trying to decide if I want to do this in a figure eight or not. Yeah. Maybe. No. I'm just going to tie it loose like this. And then to make it easy to find it later, I am going to put one of these silicone zip ties through it. Bearing in mind that this is the first time I have done any of this technique. So, first time I've had to tie these two, tie two ends together like this. Who knows how it's going to go? That's why it's an adventure. Hopefully it goes well. All right. Now I did, when I built this frame, purposely built it so that I can take the ends off and get the skein off easier. One more thing I want to do is I want to put some silicone zip ties around it completely because I find that really helps keep it from getting really tangled when I'm washing it. That is off of there. I'm going to have to take this and put it through this tie here so that does not get just all over the place. Just holding it in place. I like that these silicone zip ties have this locking feature. That's pretty cool. So. All right. There we go. And it is ready to go get washed. And after it's washed, I will go ahead and let it dry. And then I'll just watch and bring it back and show y'all how it turned out. So I will see you then. And here is our finished yarn. Now I did have some problems when I was rinsing and washing it with bleeding, a lot of bleeding. Um, so after about the 10th time of rinsing it, when I was still getting some bleeding, I went ahead and tossed it in uh, the crock pot in some vinegar water and turn the heat up on that um, for a little while, not for very long, um, maybe half hour or so, um, then turn it off and just let it cool down overnight in the crock pot and then washed and rinsed it again the next day um, until I got what I thought was no bleeding. The water looks clear, um, so I thought, cool, I'm good. I can go hang it up to dry, but then when I put it through my salad spinner to get the last little bit of water out, this is what the water looked like. It's just a pale amount of blue, just a very little bit of color, and I am not sure why. Um, I don't know if it's not set completely for some reason. I wouldn't think that it's that there's loose dye in there because if you look 
here you can see we still have bright white plain undyed sections of yarn here i mean this there's no color on this so if there was loose dye um if it was bleeding in the dye bath this should be grabbing it just like our yarn mops have done um, other times so that's not happening the first day when i was washing it because it was heckin hot outside our house is older it was built in the early 70s and when it gets really hot outside you cannot get cold water out of our taps the best you can do is tepid and one of the reasons on clothing when you have dark clothing that the wash tags say washing cold water with light colors is because hot water can make color can make dye bleed and that the same holds true for yarn um, so I thought maybe that was the problem. But the next day I was able to actually get cold water to rinse it with. Um, so I don't think that could be the problem. Um, I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it with this yarn. Um, this is just yarn for me. At this point, I don't sell any of my yarn. Um, sometimes I will knit things for other people with it um, as gifts. I will be keeping this just for something to knit for me to keep um, until you know since I'm not sure about any potential bleeding problems with it and I hand wash all of my hand knits anyway even if they're super washed like this sometimes hats I don't I'll admit uh, but this one I will definitely make sure that I hand wash it in cold water if I still have bleeding with it then I will set it in the crock pot again, try to set those colors again. Um, if absolute worst comes to worst, um, I'll try getting one of those uh, co uh, color catcher things. I've never used those, but I've heard about them. Um, but we'll see. Um, I just want to be upfront about that. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this just to see. Um, it is something to be aware of. It's just not something that I've run into before. Um, so I don't know. Anyway, to look at the yarn, um, it looks so much different here like this than it did on our frame, didn't it? Um, obviously you cannot tell where the paw prints were. Um, this would probably be the part that was on top. maybe here possibly because we've got some of that yellow there and blue and purple we've got a lot of still deep rich saturated colors here and then this would be the back i think with the white i don't know it is really hard to tell now that it's off the frame and i am honestly not going to take the couple of hours to wind it on the frame again that took to wind it on the frame the first time but I think it turned out really pretty. Um, I'll admit I was a little less than 100% thrilled when I saw all of the white that was on there because I'm just really not normally a fan of yarn that's been dyed that still has huge sections of white in it. Um, I'm somebody that I want my yarn to either be all white or I want my yarn to be all colors. Um, Typically, I just don't like big splotches of white. Um, but then I knit up the swatch. And check it out. I might be a convert because it's just so pretty. You know, it, it blends so nicely. And that white actually makes these darker colors sort of makes it look almost pastel. And yet you see these bright pops of the blue right here and the orange right here. We actually do have some of that in here. I watched as I was knitting. Um, I put this on my my Swift and watched to make sure I was getting to some of these sections with the really dark saturated colors um, just to make sure I had some in here. And yeah, they're in here. They're these little bits right here where it's really, really dark, but it all blends really well. And obviously these orange bits are the orange here but they're really really subtle it all blends through and it becomes just this really sort of pastel um it kind of reminds me of an impressionist 
watercolor painting of a field with violets in it. Um, something like that, I don't know. But I think it turned out really pretty. I, I had to take some time to think about what would I name this colorway. Um, not that I need to since I'm just keeping it for me, but I like giving them names. You know, who knows, maybe, maybe I'll get all crazy sometime and, and go back and redo this one, you know, again. And so I wouldn't know what to call it. So I decided, you know, even though yes, here it looks kind of like a watercolor painting of wildflowers, because I made it with um, the little frozen ice paw prints, uh, I decided I would call this one uh, Watercolor Paw Prints. I thought that would be kind of a nice name for it. And I want to knit this on something that's a much larger item to see how this all works together and pulls because this is a true variegated. There is no striping in this. This is not a semi-solid by any stretch of imagination. It's definitely not a total. It's not uh, a gradient or a fade. It's not stripes. It's not self-striping. This is a true, true variegated because it is all completely random where the colors are and where they're going to fall. So I want to see how it's going to work out, knit over a larger project. So I'm uh, playing with designing a shawl that I can knit with this. Um, I have written a couple of shawl patterns before, but I've not completed knitting them yet. So this will be an adventure for me to try to design, write a pattern, and knit a shawl out of, knit a shawl specifically for yarn that I have dyed. Um, if I'm successful with that, I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. So anyway, here is our yarn. Um, I cannot really wind it into a hank well because it's very small compared to what it normally would be from the way that I put on the frame. Oh, hey, I did. And she get it. Yay. It is mini, isn't it? It is teeny compared to normal. So here is our skein. Looking all pretty and compact. And I have just shy of 400 yards to play with. So I'm going to go pop this on the Swift, wind it into a ball, and start knitting the lace shawl with it. So I hope you guys had fun watching me solar dye this yarn. And I hope you have a great day. I will talk to you on our next adventure. Bye.